What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to do professional integration testing for Flask applications in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to learn how to do professional integration testing for Flask applications in Python today. But before we get into the code, I would like to talk a little bit about the idea of integration testing and how it differs from the other types of testing that there are. And for this, I found a graphic from a blog post online. This is the graphic. And to be safe, here's also the source, catalan.com. This is the blog post where I got this graphic from. And this graphic illustrates quite well the idea of unit testing, integration testing and end to end testing in this pyramid here. The higher you go in the pyramid, the more integration you have, the more comprehensive tests you have, the slower the tests are and the lower you go, the more isolated, simple and faster they are. So unit tests, I have videos on unit tests on this channel already. Unit testing means testing individual units. One function, one unit is tested. Uh, we see whether this one particular unit works correctly. But in applications, you have multiple units working together. You have one function, the second function, a third function, and they call each other. They are executed in a certain uh, order and they don't work independently. They have to, to work together. And this is what you test with integration tests here with API tests you test how well the individual units work together. And then you have uh, one level above that, how the UI also works with the backend. So you might have a backend, you have individual units, individual endpoints and functions, and then you have uh, tests on how they work together. But you then also want to test, okay, how does the front end work with the back end? So how are the requests sent from the front end to the back end, then the back end produces a result and how well is this result displayed in the front end? Is everything the way it should be? And then on top, you have, of course, manual testing, which is uh, you just testing your application as a user, which is the most high level way of testing. Today, we're going to talk about this integration test layer here. So we're going to take individual units, and we're going to test them as, um, as a whole thing as so so how well they work together. And for this, we're going to build a flask application, a simple to do list application. On this channel, I have a video where I show you how to implement a full to do list application with checking and with uh, deleting and creating and, uh, and inspecting to do's and stuff like that. Today, we're going to have a very, very simple version of a to do list application. And of course, you can also skip that part because you don't really need to watch the process of the development of the application if you're only interested in the integration testing. So you can hopefully find timestamps down below that allow you to skip the uh, flask application development part and you can jump directly into the testing. Uh, we're going to keep it simple. So I'm going to just create here an app py file. And by the way, of course, we need to install some packages if you don't have them installed yet. pip3 install flask, obviously, and we're also going to use pandas. Uh, so what we're going to basically do here is we're going to build an application that allows you to add to do's to remove to do's, and to download the to do list as an exo file. And the idea of the integration test is now to not just test whether the add to do function works, whether the remove function works, or whether the download function works, it's to test the process of adding to do's, removing to do's, and then downloading the file and seeing if the content of the Excel file is what we're expecting. So a unit test would be testing just the add to do function. What happens when I call the add to do function with these parameters? Is there a new to do? Works. What happens when I do something that's not allowed? Fails. Okay, perfect. And the integration test is what happens if I first add to do's, then remove to do's, then download the list? Does everything work correctly? That's the idea of an integration test. So we're going to start here by saying from flask import flask with a capital F render template request URL for and send from directory. And we're going to also import pandas as PD. And we're going to say the app is a flask application with underscore underscore name underscore underscore the template folder is going to be templates. And then we're going to say to do's is an empty list. And we're going to start with a simple index endpoint. So app dot route is going to have just a slash the root endpoint here. And it's going to have the index function, which is just going to return a render template call to the index HTML file that we're going to code here in a second. And we're going to pass to do's here so that we can display the to do's. 
in the HTML file. And the HTML, uh, HTML file will be here in a directory called templates. And here we're going to have the index HTML file. We're going to change this here in a second. But that is basically the idea here. Then we're going to have an endpoint or a route called slash add. And this is going to be a route where we can send post requests to so methods equals post. The function here is going to be at and what we're going to do is we're going to say to do equals request not route sorry request dot form. We're going to get from the form that we're going to have in our index HTML file, we're going to get the to do field and we're going to say to do append to do. That's basically what we want to do. And then we're going to return a redirect to URL for index. And I think we need to also import redirect here. So that's the add function. And then we also have the remove function. Uh, let's just copy the structure here so that I don't have to retype everything. We're going to say remove the function is going to be called remove. We're not going to use post. We're also not going to use delete because I don't want to uh, use forms, I'm just going to have a link, it's going to send a get request, of course, if we're doing this properly in an actual application, you should uh, use delete the method delete to delete and post to create and get to see or to, to get essentially and put to update, but we're just going to use get for delete now because we're senders. So we're going to just say here, del to do's. And actually, this is going to take a parameter, it's going to take an index uh, parameter, which is an integer. And this index will just specify which to do we want to delete. And actually, we're going to uh, have to do from one to n and not from zero to n. So we're going to say index minus one. And we're going to redirect to index as well. And then the last endpoint that we're going to have uh, is going to be the Excel download. So we're going to call this just download to do's. So slash download to do's. Uh, it's going to be a get endpoint, we're going to have a function download. And we're going to say the data frame is going to be equal to a pandas data frame. And it's going to be based on a dictionary, it's going to have the fields to do underscore ID. And the to do ID is going to just be a, a list of range of length of to do's. And we're going to say to do's or to do is going to be to do's. Then we're going to take that we're going to turn it, or we're going to export it to an Excel file, which is going to be just to do's dot xlsx. And uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to send that so we're going to send this to the user so the user can download this. So we're going to say send from directory, then we're going to pass a point here current directory and we're going to say to do start at xlsx. And then finally here if underscore underscore name underscore underscore equals underscore underscore main underscore underscore, then we're going to say app run debug equals true. All right, so that is our uh, flask backend, we're also going to have an index HTML file, uh, we're going to say here to do's as a title. And we're going to keep it simple, we're going to have an ordered list so that we have uh, the numbers so that we know which one uh, we're actually looking at. And why is this not automatically formatting correctly? So we're going to have here a simple Jinja template, we're going to say percent percent in between, we're going to say for to do in to do's. And since we pass to do's here, uh, with render template, since we do that, we can easily just uh, we can easily just uh, access to do's here. We're going to also have a percent percent end for and in between what we're going to do is we're going to have individual list items. And the list items are going to basically just display the to do so two curly brackets to do. And we're going to have a link afterwards with uh, href being equal to 
and then two curly brackets url underscore four and remove is going to be the endpoint and what we're passing here index is going to be the loop iteration that we're currently at so loop dot index yeah so that's the idea and the text of this will be remove now let me just see if this makes sense with the index yeah it should work okay so we're going to have the loop iterations the loop index will be passed as an index for remove here and uh, then we're going to subtract one to actually remove it from the list or to remove the correct to do from the list i hope this makes sense i'm going to test it here in a second um and that's basically the only thing that we need now is we need a little form to create a new to do so form method equals obviously post and the action is going to be two curly brackets url for we're gonna say uh what was it at and then all we want to have here is a simple input of type text which is going to have the name to do. And then we also need a button. So input type submit, which will have the value at to do. And now really the last thing that we need here is a href and then URL for uh, to curly brackets and parentheses, there you go, download, to actually download the to-do list. All right, so that should be it, uh, quite simple. I can now run this, and if I open this up in my browser, we should be able to use this application, so A, B, C, D, now let's see if I can remove them correctly. There you go. Okay, again, A, B, C, D. And I can now download this, I can put it on the desktop. And you will see we have to do ID and to do so this works, I now did the high level testing here. So the highest level in the diagram, which is where is it this one the manual testing. But now we're going to have an automated integration test. This is what we're going to build now here. So I'm going to create a new Python file, and I'm going to call this flask integration test. And here now we're going to import a couple of things, we're going to import IO, we're going to import unit test, we're going to import pandas as PD, and we're going to import from app, which is our app.py file here, from app, we're going to import the app itself. And now we're going to create a class flask integration test case. This is going to extend from unit test dot test case, even though we're doing an integration test, we're going to use unit test dot test case uh, for the inheritance here, we're going to define the setup function. So setup self, and here we're going to set the config. So we're going to say app, and then or actually app dot config. And we're going to set the testing field. So testing like this, we're going to set this to true, so that the application knows it's in testing mode. And we're going to say self dot client is going to be equal to app dot test client. So there's this function, this method test client, that returns a test client that we can use to send requests to the application. So this is the setup, and then we will define just a simple test case. Now you can define multiple test case for this video, we're going to just define one simple test case. And this is going to be the test underscore at underscore remove underscore to do's and download Excel. And usually test names are very long, because they explain everything you're doing at test remove test, uh, or actually at to do remove to do download Excel, see if they're correct, whatever. So should fail should not fail, whatever. Uh, so that is our test name here. And we're going to say for I in range, let's go from one to six. We're going to now say self dot client this is our testing client that we get here. Uh, we're going to send a post request first to the endpoint slash at. And then we're going to say data equals and this is going to be the post data that we send to the at endpoint. 
And all we're going to do here is we're going to send to do is going to be a formatted string to do and then the index of the iteration. So just to do one to do two, three, four, five. That is the first part of the test. So this is one unit. If we just test this, if we just test if this post request produces new to do's, that would be a unit test of the at endpoint. Now we're going to also say self dot client get again, this should usually be delete, but we're going to say get remove to and then we're going to say response equals self dot client dot get and we're going to send a get request to slash download to do's. And we're going to assert now. So self assert equal, first of all, that the response status code is equal to 200. That the content type, so the response dot content type, not content range, content type is equal to and now I have to type this from my second screen because it's quite long application. Let me just make sure I'm not blocking this with my camera. Application slash VND dot open XML formats dash office document dot spreadsheet dot sheet. So we just want to make sure that this is an Excel file. This is what this means. Uh, so that's the assertion here. And afterwards with and now we want to see the content of that with IO bytes IO response dot data. This is the Excel file itself as buffer. What we want to do now is want to say data frame equals PD read Excel from the buffer. So from the file. And then we want to assert the following assert list equal and we want to see that the list to do one to do three to do four to do five. This is what we expect to be part of the data frame column to do that that is actually the same thing as data frame to do dot values dot to list. We want to know that this is actually the same. So this is the integration test. Let's run it and see what happens. And in this case, it fails. Why? Why does it fail? Because I mistyped uh, the spreadsheet. Yeah, it should be spreadsheet ML. Sorry. Now it still fails. Why does it fail? Because uh... Oh, because I have a space between the to do's, but you can see already why these tests are useful because they show me that what I'm expecting is not what I'm getting. But now it should work. There you go. Test passed. And uh, everything worked fine. Resource warning. Okay, that's not too important. But our test case uh, succeeded, we can also run the full class here if we have multiple tests. And you can see everything went correctly, which means that this test uh, worked the way we expected it to work. And this is very useful because as you can see, we're testing three components and how they work together. First, I add to do's, then I remove to do's, then I download these to do's as Excel files. And in the end, everything is the way I want it to be. And if I now change something because I want to extend a feature, I want to change something about this application, I can just rerun these tests if I have multiple of those all the time to see if something that worked before now doesn't work anymore. So now I can see, okay, all of this works as expected. Now I made some changes in the code base. And if two tests fail, all of a sudden, I know that I messed up something. And I can immediately see that without having to go through the application and test every single process myself again. So this is the value of integration tests. And they differ from unit tests because you're testing multiple components, multiple units at the same time. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.